Would you rather be loved by all or feared by all? Travel forwards in time or back in time? Ultimate ultimatums and diabolical dilemmas await inside the Dilemma Academy. Hey everyone and welcome back to the Dilemma Academy. We're your hosts, CJ, Jess and Demi. And today we get stuck into transportation, what would you do with your body when you die, and re-embodiment into a farm animal. So without further ado, let's get started. How's everyone's week been? Very good. Been a busy week, I must say, or work-wise for me at least. Had like a client uh, Christmas dinner on, on Friday night. Yesterday was a full day shooting my cousin's wedding photography, which is always a full-on day. My legs are so sore because I was like, had to... It was an interesting ceremony location, like different to anything that I'd done before because it was kind of like... Um, it was it was very nice. It was at Nantian Temple, which is like a really big um, Buddhist temple. It's the biggest Buddhist temple in the Southern Hemisphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they did it at the um, like the lotus po- lotus pond that they have there. Um, so they were like standing down by the pond, and then it kind of like swept up like this hill with all these trees and stuff, which was nice. They had all the guests kind of like scattered around on that hill. Um, and normally, when you're doing wedding photography, you're able to sort of just like move around the back of people because they're all sort of more grouped right in front of where the ceremony happens. But uh, for this one, I kind of had to like constantly be walking in front of where people's like line of sight would have been to the the ceremony so i'm like i'm obviously conscious of like not ruining people's experience of the ceremony so i'm like crab crawling (laughs) crab crawling around like the front of the ceremony like down in like a deep squat position like sticking my legs out like i'm a freaking crab along the beach like scuttling from side to side to get the different angles of the ceremony it was so funny to watch i was just like sitting on a chair um, watching the ceremony and I just saw, you know, throughout the entire ceremony, CJ just crab walking around. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, funny. My legs today are like so sore from that. But yeah, worth it. You do what you, get, you do what you got to do when you do wedding To get the shot. So, to get the shot. <laughs> and plus they have like two kids. So I was like constantly like crouching down to shoot them as well and get nice shots and stuff. So yeah, it's a full day workout as they doing a, a wedding shoot. So I'm sore today. Especially a wedding on a hill. Yeah, especially a wedding on a hill. It would have been really difficult, I think, actually, to do videography um, on, like, the sloping terrain and stuff like that. It would have made it work, but, yeah, it would have been... You wouldn't want to have, like, left your camera sitting there. Like, even the slightest breeze would have, (laughs) you know, sent the thing toppling over, so... Yeah, it was a good wedding, though. Very good. Very fun. Yeah, I said to them it was, like, a bit of everything because they got married at a temple, Nantian Temple, and then we went and did a photo shoot in, like, the botanical gardens, which was, like, roses and, you know, that sort of nice, like, garden-esque setting. And then they had the reception at, like, surf club, so it was, like, on the beach. And then we went and got some photos on the beach as well. So I was like, you guys have really covered a lot of bases with this wedding. Like, most people just have it, like, at a winery or, you know, at a beach or something. And they're like, no, we're going to do a temple. We're going to do a beach. We're going to do some gardens. It's like, yeah. Very cool. Pretty Very cool. cool. Every aesthetic they could have ever wanted. All wrapped up in one. Yeah, exactly. So. What about you, Demi? I inadvertently helped the police catch a guy <laughs> this week. <laughs> do tell. That sounds pretty interesting. <laughs> Uh, so I finished my like aerial class and I was walking so in Surrey Hills in the city I was walking up the street just like not paying attention just watching the because I record myself to make sure that my toes are pointed or that my back is arched and I don't look like a retard (laughs) so I was just like watching back my video with my headphones in and I can see a police car like slowing down and staring at me and I'm like staring at the cops like what the why are you looking at me i'm not doing anything just reminds me of that lisa simpson's meme when um it's very hard to explain a meme over a podcast but it's like when my boyfriend says something and i'm like what you want to fight me (laughs) yes i know the meme you're talking about the lisa like hunched up hunched up yeah hands out hands out (laughs) yes that was basically me so the cops had slowed down and i thought they had just like kept driving but they must have stopped like just behind me and then this guy like just like running kind of briskly up the street and he's tried to come around me as I've walked past this like little side street and because I wasn't paying attention I kind of like ran into him and he had to stop and like go right around me which is not what he should have done he should have just scooted behind me and he would have been able to get away (laughs) but he like well because he like kind of shoulder barged me and then I death stared him so I was like looking in his direction as well because I was super annoyed because he touched me with his skin (laughs) his greasy criminal skin I have looked it's just I don't want people in the city to touch me (laughs) full stop it doesn't matter who it is I don't want to be touched by city people so I stared at like death stared at him which must have the cops must have seen me like 
looking in his direction. So they've come running up the street after me and I hear them like go stop like and I turn around because I thought they were talking to me again yeah but I see them like grab the guy by the back of the shirt and pull him out from this car park that was kind of like around the corner and he had this like like a you know the 40 ounce VB in a brown paper bag (laughs) oh wow (laughs) so I'm guessing because there's a bottle shop right next door to my studio yeah so I'm thinking he's gone in there and he's just taken it yeah, like off the, off the counter. Yeah. Like as they were going to pay or something, he just got into an argument with the guy and he's just run up the street immediately after I've come out of yeah. class. Wow, the police yeah. acted really quickly there. Yeah, and I can see how that conversation in the bottle shop would have went. It's like, oh, mate, yeah, just want to get your spot of VB. Thanks. Like, it. oh, yeah, that'll be, you know, twelve ninety five. It's like, oh, mate, it seems like I left my wallet back in my other pants at home. Is it all right if I just owe you on this one, I'll mate? just pay you and later, like, mate. No, you've got to pay me now. It's like, oh, wait, fuck it. <laughs> I guarantee you that guy is not having like his shirt was all like holy like he was yeah probably lived in one of like either was homeless or lived in a homeless shelter or he's a new town hippie <laughs> or he's a new town hippie he's too he was too it's old hard to, tell to be sometimes. Australians will get the new town joke but yeah or well, Sydney siders will get the new town joke <laughs> yeah Sydney siders <laughs> he he was not like life was not treating that man very well but I helped the cops stop him by because I wasn't paying attention. Because if I was paying attention, I probably would have let him go in front of me. Yeah. Like if I wasn't on, if I what had didn't have my earphones in, I would have stopped that yeah. guy just out of like yeah, you know, politeness. Yeah, you normally stop. Yeah, because you don't want the city greasy skin yeah. on your skin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want city people touching me. Yeah. You did a good job. <laughs> good job at not good season. <laughs> Um, I uh, was, heard about a s- study that had been done recently on uh, pine bark extract, which is like a supplement, like, well, not like a supplement, I suppose, but it's like, you can get it in like the, you know, the vitamins and that sort of section, like you can get tablets and stuff that have it in a, uh, some like turmeric tablets and stuff now, um, have it in them. Apparently, if you take it like a month or two, like for a month or two leading into like allergy seasons, it's been... I think it was proven in animals, not human studies yet, but it's been proven to significantly reduce allergy symptoms. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that because it's like you're exposing your body to small allergens like I'm not over sure. time? Yeah. Um, I haven't done a lot of reading into it yet or like gone into a lot of detail, but yeah, apparently it's been proven in animals. So That's interesting. Yeah. It might be worth trying. I think it's, it's obviously it's harmless. I like there's no side effects or anything like that. It's just a, you know, it's just like a health supplement, I suppose. But yeah, apparently it could have that effect. So if you, hmm. you have really bad, al- you know, allergies and you don't want to be constantly on like antihistamines and stuff like that, you do have to give it that bit of a lead up apparently, like one to two, two months, like mm. to be safe, you know, taking it every day. But yeah, apparently it can really help. And you can also get it in like turmeric, like turmeric style capsules and stuff, which yeah, that, that's got really good anti-inflammatory benefits that are known and proven already anyway. So it's kind of like, well, if you can, you might yeah. be worth trying it. So. What are the other like benefits of, what were the original like reasons that they put it into a tablet? Um, I think the original was for like, uh, it's just another natural anti-inflammatory oh, style, okay. style oh, thing. Could, yeah. But yeah. now there's, there's this like side benefit to it apparently that yeah, can really help ease allergy symptoms. Cause I've heard of like cool. forest bathing before, which is when you go into like a forest and you walk around and it helps calm you down. So I thought it might've been like an anti-anxiety tablet yeah. thing. Oh, I think okay. a lot of like those anti-inflammatories also are like anti, excuse me. I think a lot of those like anti-inflammatory tablets are also like yeah, anti-anxiety, like especially the, 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 you know, root extracts and all that sort of stuff too. Mm. But yeah, this is just a hmm. cool new little element of it, but it hasn't been proven in humans yet. So it might not be, I don't know, it might not be as effective for us or effective at all. Being pregnant, I um, usually do have bad hay fever, but this spring I didn't feel the need to take a single hay fever tablet, huh, okay. which was interesting. I would have the very typical pregnancy rhinitis that you get where you have a bit of a blocked stuffy nose, you might have to sneeze a bit, but it never really felt like allergies that I had. Um, but I didn't have to take a single antihistamine this spring. So quite sure it was being pregnant, something was... I don't know. More and more proving that being pregnant is like having a superpower. <laughs> Maybe I just ways, so. got all your allergies because I've had this see, allergy had season is allergy. the worst allergies that I've ever had in my life. But we've also I'm had smoke. <laughs> don't blame me. It might be the bushfires that have, they're still raging, by the way, yeah. in Australia. Well, East Coast. Oh, no, all of yeah. Australia. All, all of Australia. Australia. Every single 
state and territory in oh, Australia, wow. except I don't know about Tasmania. Oh, okay. But do yeah. they count? Yeah. <laughs> Where the country on fire. Is on, yeah, there's been emergency warnings in Western Australia, wow. Northern Territory, South Australia, Victoria, here, Queensland. Well, we're in such a bad drought at the moment. It's not a surprise. Um, yeah. We're apparently going to go into one of the worst drought riddled summers yeah, that ever. we've had in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ever. We're going to level two water restrictions on the 10th wow. of December, so yep. make sure that you don't wash your cars. And yeah. Unless you were washing it a commercial car wash, that's fine. But like, You have to boring. wash it with a bucket if you do wash your car yep. yeah. at home. And you can't publicly voice your opinion if you're a climate change denier anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking banned. Yeah. Banned. Right. All right. Shall we get stuck into today's dilemmas? Sure. Yes. Who's going first? All right. Uh, I'm happy to start, I suppose. I'll kick things off. So, my dilemma for today, it's a little bit of a deep one. So, get your thinking caps on. Uh, Would you rather donate your organs to those who need them when you die or donate your body to science? It's a tough one. It's very tough. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're dead. You're not going to use them either way. So, I guess it just depends where you want your body's resources after you're gone to go. Uh, does the science part like count as one of those like do you remember like earlier this year there was like the plasticized humans that yeah. were like being demonstrated for children and stuff yeah does that count as science um yeah i mean i guess if you donate to science i don't think you have control over what they do with your body you no. just know it's going to science I don't but you you classify in this question you classify that as to science yeah i would okay. classify that as to science and mm. i would classify you know obviously donating your organs to people who need them is like yeah that sort of thing. I don't that's, have to yeah. clarify what that that's is. I don't think that's clear. pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. So. I mean, I suppose, yeah, donating your body to science could include being sent to be, I don't know, plasticized for that. It's like a tour sort of thing that goes all around the world. I've been to it. We've been to it. Have you been yeah. to it, Demi? Yeah. 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 We went we to went it by school, school actually, yeah. yeah, like 10 years ago when it was um, in Australia, and it was amazing. They perfectly preserved the human body um, – in many many different ways and as as a school person as a student i really enjoyed it and learned a lot from it but i suppose the other method of um donating your body to science is also for medical and science students where you need cadavers to look at you know the body for anatomy and i'm sure there's multiple other uses as well especially if you're studying the medical profession to only be able to have a look at you know the human lungs or whatever so yeah exactly i suppose there's a lot of parts of the human body that would be hard to you know dissect and examine and all that sort of stuff while you're alive so i guess Mm. in in that way donating to science gives people a chance to have a look at that sort of stuff and i guess also depending you know on what you die from i mean that's not specified in this question but that would also i guess impact your you know importance to Mm. science research you know, scientific research as well. So yeah, I guess there's a lot of general scientific applications to donating your body in that way. I guess it's just what your personal preference is. So. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult question because both arguably help people, which is why you would donate your body. But do you want to help somebody like personally or do you want to help someone's education so that they can help in the future? Yeah, I think it's like tossing up between the impact level of your change to someone else's life and their understanding of science like against each other arguably donating yourself uh, your organs to somebody who is in a real dire need for them is more impactful than say potentially what your educational you know how your body could impact the education of like a student for example um well you're potentially saving multiple people's lives at once by donating your organs yeah so. you know but uh, i mean i guess or know, improving the quality of life as well because you can do- donate your corneas from your eyes and that can that that can enable someone to see that is the only thing i don't want to be taken well my corneas probably aren't very useful because i'm like blind in one eye <laughs> the other eye is not so great either <laughs> i thought but you I, said this cornea <laughs> transplant would be an upgrade <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much a downgrade that's that's one of the things i don't want people to take well that's interesting mm. as well because it's when you're donating i guess when you donate your body to science my understanding would be that you would have to donate your entire body I to know. science I, well no you can because i'm on the like on your license or something you can remember when you were filling out your license you could say and that's that you, for organ donation though yeah 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 so this is like for organ donation so you can like take off choose which ones well, if I'm donating my body to science, it's my whole body, but... 
Yeah. Will they take my eyeballs? I want my eyes. Probably. I want my eyes. Yeah. Did you ever go to a cadaver thing when you would, did biology? No, I didn't actually see a proper cat- cadaver no? because I didn't do anatomy. Um, my major was in microbio, so it was all in the microbio and biochemistry mm. space. It wasn't like part of the first year of science? Not for me. No. Not, I, could, I could have chosen it, but I just went ahead and chose the chemistry um, and physics subjects to try and boost my biochem side. Oh, so but, yeah. in UTS, is everybody who does a science degree, no matter what field you go into afterwards, the first year has to do human anatomy and physiology. I, I, looking back, I wish that I did that, but um, I guess I just chose not to. I think, I think back then when I was in first year uni, I didn't know that if you cho- chose anatomy, you'd be able to like see and work on a cadaver. Now that I do know, I definitely would have chosen it. But we didn't work on oh, them, well. but we got to like view yeah. them. Like we we got to like hold somebody's like heart. We got oh, to hold wow. a brain. Like they were showing us like. You're it's pulling cool. out tendons and ligaments and stuff where we got to like pull on them and all that kind of stuff. Oh, it was pretty cool. Awesome. Well, that's a great example, I suppose, of what your body would yeah. potentially end w- up being if you yeah. donated to science. So We are very thankful. It was like a, a woman's body and it was probably like an older woman. We were very thankful like that th- those people had chose to give their body to us because we could learn those yeah, things. How else would we know what like it looks like? How yeah. else would I know how yeah. heavy a heart is or how he- heavy a brain mm-hmm. is? And it's mm-hmm. much heavier than you think. Like, yeah. it is. Yeah. It's an interesting one, I think, because either way, I think you're doing something really positive to impact people's lives. I guess it's just it's in a very different way, mm. you know? So, wh- wh- which way are you guys leaning at the moment? Because you're going to have to come to a decision eventually. I know. I'm very torn. Because all, like, one of my life goals is to, and I don't know how I'm going to do this. This is not something that I can just, like, do, like, plan ahead and do. But I really want to save somebody's, like, life one day. Yeah. And, you know, I give blood and stuff like that, so... You know, you could say that that's oh, saving somebody's I life. So. I want to know that they saved their life and not just yeah. like gave them blood or whatever. Well, what happens is um, when you do donate your organs to other people who need them, you do tend to get a report, like a letter. Oh, well, not you, of course, but your, <laughs> your, your family, family yeah. does. And they it confirms, and it say names or anything, but it confirms, you know, this... 43 year old woman received your corneas and this 35 year old man received you know the left kidney and you know this person received you know what whatever you know whatever else the liver or whatever so you do your family does get a report of how you helped yeah. people which do is I, really nice i think do i have to is this question only for like if i'm dead like can i just is this yeah, a, is well, this the am dead, dead thing okay yeah yeah i don't know yeah, so no, don't, it's right. not donate an organ. No, no, no. Just yeah. all of donate death. your oh, organs oh, yeah. after you die. Yeah. So because yeah, that makes it more in line, I think, with donating your body to science. Yeah. Yes, true. Yeah. Like I, I, like when my dad passed away, his I think it was his corneas got donated to someone. Both to of them. his corneas. Both of his corneas yeah. got donated. Well, to one someone. cornea went to someone, one person, and another cornea went to another. To someone person. else. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, from from someone who was still here after you know, from a family member's perspective, that was nice to know. That was a nice I suppose letter. there was like a bit of extra purpose behind behind it, mm. you know, to know that or at least somebody else who's in a bad situation in life has been has been gifted, I suppose, as part of this what was like obviously a sad, you know, event um, to know that, you know, and I guess you, it's a bit more personal as well rather than sort of just being a body that's donated to science, Um you know, as a family member of someone who had that happen to, I think it was nicer to know that they'd been donated specifically to help people in that way rather than just generally to science because I doubt you would get any sort of report as to how the body no, was used for scientific wouldn't. purposes, you know. But that's potentially besides the point to what you would want for your own body. But just something to take into consideration, I suppose, is that, you know, you'll probably have other people still left who have their own feelings about what you would choose to. Was that something your dad discussed prior? Like that he wanted to have his body donated? Yes. Or? Yeah. yeah, I think he was. I yeah, mean, he has to give consent. Yeah, it's like I think you have to yeah, sort of say, yeah, I'm, I give consent to donate my and organs. And I'm stuff quite like sure they reaffirm the consent with the next, next of kin as they well. They do. Yeah. It's, the next of kin has every right to say no. No, yeah. 
why, why would they like if you they know that yeah. that's what you want or if it's maybe yeah. and I think that he would have been one of those people as well who would have been happy to donate to science like he'd always said oh you know if I ever die don't bury me in a grave just chuck me in the forest and let me degrade back into nature <laughs> so I think you know I, he it, wanted to give back yeah 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 I think the controversial aspect of this dilemma is um, when you think about, I suppose, from a personal perspective, how you may potentially be used after you die. So it would be awful if, you know, if you were, if you donated your body to science and you were made into a cadaver, um, that the students may not be appreciative. You know, Mm -hmm. you'd hope not. You'd hope that the students are very grateful for this opportunity that they've been provided and you'd hope that the educators ensure that they know how rare and special this is for them to be able to, you know, use the cadaver for their own education. But you would hope that you're not, I suppose, in a very selfish manner, hope that you're not made fun of or whatever because your body might look weird. I don't know. And then at the same time, if you donate, certain parts of your body to other people what if they have completely different values to you what if you're donating to someone who may be a bad person you would hope that they're all good people because they're receiving an organ but what if they feel like they're entitled to it you don't know who you're donating that you know your organs to as well so those are probably the negative controversial aspects of this dilemma and you can't control that you're making it difficult Jessica (laughs) Yeah, it's a hard one. I mean, I know that there are not tests, but, you know, there's um, screening processes, I think, to like being on organ donation lists and stuff like that. You know, like if you, you know, if you're an alcoholic, for example, you're not going to be high on the list for a liver transplant compared Mm -hmm. to someone who's not an alcoholic. And I mean, I don't know what things they take into account there. Like, you know, if if like criminal record, for example, is taken into account. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's just, it's physicality. It's not like morals or anything. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I guess in that instance, then the, the, the way that I would look at it is potentially organ donation has a a much higher potential pro, but maybe a more negative bad. If you, you know, ended up giving something to someone who wouldn't, you know, take care of it in the way that you would hope that they would. Whereas maybe the worst case scenario for donating to science is, uh, you know, some kids don't necessarily take it as seriously as others, but I'm sure a whole class of 30 or 90 or a year, it's not, not everyone is going to be making fun or, or not take it seriously. Like you probably know the hit rate at least is that you're going to still, you know, uh, have some positive educational experience to some people, even if some don't take it seriously. Mm. So I suppose you're looking at it in, in that way now, where, you know, pros and cons of science maybe is less so than the you know, highly escalated pros and cons of, of donating your organs. Yeah, I think I feel like you have a more even sort of balance in the in the scale when you donate it to science because the I guess the the positive is also very good, but the negatives are you know minor. But when you look at donating your organs to people, the positives are, I would say, insanely good. Like you're you're, you're saving lives. I mean, wh- what more can you do? And then there's also your life. There's but, like the chance that your their body could reject that organ. Yeah, and you can't re, you can't take it out and reuse it because it's already started to die. Exactly. So like, so the risks a, are yeah higher. greater risks. Yeah, than donating your body to science. Mm. Much more so. Ah, oh, I'm really. Torn. It's a hard question. I'm CJ. <laughs> Why would you do this to me? Because you're still helping people. Yeah. Oh God. Mm. Mm. It's, eh. it's definitely a tricky one um look let me say my answer and that might okay. sort of give you guys some guidance in regards to what you would think all right um i think if you take you weigh all the pros and cons of, of both and you know i guess at the end of the day you're not going to be aware of what happens all you know is what might happen when you die i'm i'd probably err towards donating my organs um because i feel like the impact on some you know unfortunate people's lives you know might be a real life changing thing and and, you know sure that there might be that potential that you give it to someone who's not going to be appreciative and and all that but i'm sure you know everyone who receives a a transplant in that way is is going to at least at first be appreciative and uh, you hope that maybe that process 
makes them rethink some of the things that maybe led them there if they need the transplant because they were you know abusive to a part of their body like their liver or something or you know they were smoked so that's why they need a lung transplant or something like that that maybe that would be enough to sort of kick them in the butt and and change some behavior and then you know you have the other end of the spectrum where you know you're helping someone who has had something go wrong with their body that they had absolutely zero control over in their life and you know as someone who you know touch wood at least up until this point I haven't really had many things go wrong with my body that were out of my control, um, except for, you know, breaking my leg last year. And obviously that's not something you can get a transplant for, but you do feel a little bit helpless, like, and you, you feel a bit sort of really down on your luck. And I think that if my body could help somebody who's in that situation, just feel generally happier with their life. I think to me, that means something more than just donating to science. Like obviously- oh, It's that not it, just donating. It. No, it's no, just I know. an alternative option. It is. Yeah. I, I guess- I can see the more immediate impacts of donating my organs to people who need them as opposed to donating to science. Yeah. That's just my opinion, I yeah. suppose, and that's probably where I'm sitting yeah. at the moment with the They're question. They're both good. They're both, you're both, both options are helping people. It's just in a different yeah. way. Yeah. One is more you're helping, the directly helping the personal life of someone that is still living and you have the ability to be able to save their life or improve their life. And the other option is potentially even more long-term because you could be used to help educate people for decades and decades and decades, even beyond the the lifespan of the people that you may save if you donated your organs. Mm, very true. So That's true. I mean, I suppose as well, on the other hand, that you know, donating your organs does mean that there will be surgeries required to transfer those organs over to other people and you know by association they're probably going to still be students around that process and, oh definitely and, and, and in a way yeah you know it's kind of helping with education too in, in some degree but definitely not to the same scope you know as, as if you donated your body to science and yeah it might not be as immediate an, an impact but yeah you're right I but think you the, would the impact scope for many change, yeah the scope for change is is much mm. wider with donating your body to science mm. yeah can i have like a conditional answer I have two Depends answers. what the condition is, Demi. <laughs> so if I donated an organ during my lifetime, so like I donated like a lobe of my liver or something, mm -hmm. then I would 100% donate my body to science yep. when I died because I well, like got to both experiences. Yeah. But now I'm like, it's a tough decision. Like if I never got the opportunity to donate like bone marrow or yep. a part of my body to somebody yeah. during my lifetime, would I donate all of my organs when I was dead or? Yeah. Ah, ah. I get what you're saying. I think let's take it as though you are you right now. So okay. you haven't, none of us have donated. So I get hit organ, by a truck so. immediately. Yeah. Like, I as mean, I leave yeah. You. Okay. Let's, well, you're not hit by a truck because you probably wouldn't be able to donate many of your organs if you got hit by a truck, but uh, let's just. No, you never know. Well, you never I, know. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't think that like you can't, let's not say you've got another 20 years to donate organs mm, you know, okay. while you're alive. And then this is becoming very morbid. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, 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 no. But you know what I mean? So it's not like we're going to die tomorrow, but yeah, that was the well, intention behind the question. What Demi just said has, has basically clarified my answer for me oh, and okay. it's, it's not, but it's not a clear answer. So oh, it's not okay. going to be a valid answer, but ideally what I would like to do mm -hmm. is, um, I would love to donate my body, like my organs to people, like the, the good organs, you know, that are able to be donated. Yeah. And then the rest of myself, I <laughs> yeah. would want to donate to science. That's, so. I thought this would come up in somebody's answer. Because yes. I think that's the ideal, in all honesty, when you're considering this, is like, take what you can to help people and then why not use the rest for science? Especially because, say, um, you know, like, you know, touch wood. Oh, I probably shouldn't have actually touched the wood, but now you can tell that I did. Um, I, I, you know, had cancer and you couldn't donate um, some of the organs because obviously they're cancerous, but you could donate other parts that were healthy. I would love for those parts to be donated to other people who needed them. But then I think it would be very cool for my body to then be donated to science because it allows students the chance to look at the way that the cancer has grown and what it does to the organs. Mm -hmm. I think that would be hugely educational and, and beneficial, but then that's choosing both answers. Yeah, and I know look, we're not I, allowed to do that. <laughs> I think we can probably all agree that that would be the best, the best um, situation. situation out of this, but it's not the dilemma. It's called the dilemma Academy I for know. a reason. And you have to choose one <laughs> or the other. 
And we're like young and healthy. And there's not very many young, healthy bodies that get donated to science because their organs are used. Yeah. Mm, yep, that's definitely true. So, oh, ah, it's why? It's very difficult. It is but, really difficult. I think, I think for me, I think whenever I think about it, I'm always like, I want to donate my organs to help someone first and then just give the rest of me to science. So I feel like that's where my, my preference is going in my head. I would like to immediately try and help people yep. where I can. So I think it would be wonderful. I think maybe also from like our personal experience, CJ of the letter that we, you know, our family received from your dad, yeah. that, that really, that actually really helped me heal yeah. with that grief. I yeah. kind of feel like oh, it, this horrible, horrible thing led to somebody being able to see again. Exactly. So it wasn't all, wasteful yeah yeah and you know part of that person i suppose lived Lives on, on. In, in a tangible physical way as well yeah is, and and to help someone else's life become significantly mm. better you know definitely helped yeah yeah I, so i think for me personally i'm leading i'm i think that's probably my answer for this dilemma it's down to demi who's <laughs> making all sorts of weird sounds trying to figure out what she wants to do mine is interesting because i have i have like the most common blood type uh, which is O positive. And the other section of that is that I have a very rare like thing in my blood is where I don't have a certain virus that most of the human population has. Mm. So like whenever I give blood, my blood normally goes to babies because the babies don't have this virus from birth. So my organs would uh, like be a little bit more worthwhile for if there was somebody out there that didn't have this virus in their blood either. But then... On the flip side yeah. is that there isn't very many young bodies out there for scientists to look at yeah. or to even to, if it was like they took my heart out and they were like testing drugs, like, you know, they attach like the valves and they like artificially beat your heart and they test drugs and stuff through that to mm. see what it does. They don't have many young fit hearts that, that are able to do that. It's so difficult. Uh, I think knowing my like personal values of really wanting to save somebody's life and really wanting to know that I have saved somebody's life. So like in my, I guess, spiritual beliefs is that I don't die. When, like my soul doesn't die when I die. It just leaves and then I can still like witness what's going on. That's what my family mm. believes and we believe that forever. So that I would, I think that I would know that I've helped somebody. Mm. So I would, you know, be there and know yeah. the person that it went to. Yeah. And see like the impacts in their life and it would just make my spirit a bit more calm. Like if I, if I died now, I'd be really angry that I didn't get to like experience my life. Yeah. <sighs> I feel like you're leaning to, I don't know this way you either way. Don't I you, think I'm leaning like... towards giving my body, giving my organs to somebody. Yeah. Donating your organs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Cause it would make more of a difference. Because there wouldn't be very many mm. organs out there who don't have that virus. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Locking but it it's in? really so <laughs> oh, God. It's hard. I don't think you've struggled this much with an answer yeah. in any of the episodes so far. It's a really hard one. I think the I think the closest one is probably a few episodes back when it was a gluten or dairy intolerance. <laughs> I really like yeah. it. <laughs> That's really difficult. But yeah, I'd probably... Yeah, give my organs. Not my eyes. Don't take my eyes. I'll take everything else. My eyes aren't really worthwhile anyway. All right. Well, hey. Well, there hey, we go. It's a unanimous decision. Cue the cheering. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. All right. That was Good a great start. question. Good start to this episode. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, Demi, do you want to hit us up with your question all right. next? So my question is a little bit more laid back, a lot more laid back. Um, oh, it's... just wait for my question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're going downhill here, guys, in terms <laughs> of seriousness. <laughs> um, so my question is, would you rather never be able to drive again, but you can use public transport or never be able to use public transport again and have to drive everywhere? Clarification. Yes. By not drive, does that mean you cannot also be a passenger in a car? Or? You can be a passenger. You just can't. You can't personally drive yourself. You okay. have to rely on lifts. Okay. And if it was like if automatic cars, the self-driving cars, if that became <laughs> a thing, would that be considered driving yourself? If you were the only person in that car, yes. Okay. So you'd have to have someone else in the car with you. What if you sat in the back seat? So we're the only person in the car. Still, still driving. Counts, yep, still, can't, still, still can't do that. Okay. Like, all right. I just wanted to know because that might happen soon and would have swayed my decision one way or the other, I think. So 
Uh, immediately thinking about it, I'm probably leaning more towards like taking the driving and giving up the public transport. That being said, I think that would make a, a you know, life here for me wouldn't change that much because I drive most places. I do a lot of driving for work as well. I could not really do my job if I had to catch public transport yeah. in all honesty. But that being said, you think about all of like the holidays that you go on and like, you know. Wait, are planes considered public transport? No. Because oh, you like God. pay a premium price to Okay, money. good. But Ooh. in yeah. that country. Yeah. You that's still can't use public transport. That's where I was going is you would have oh. to like hire a car literally everywhere you visited in the world. You'd have to hire a car. And like, while that's not the worst thing in the world, I suppose, I think it definitely makes a lot more sense in a lot of places to use public transport. Oh, definitely. Going throughout Europe, like the trains, the train system is amazing. I don't know why. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, you would. I mean, you can drive between countries. It's much easier in Europe than it is in Australia, obviously. But. The train system was so good. And in Japan, the train system yeah. was so good. That's where my mind jumped to straight yeah. away. Like Europe, I feel like is, is, you know, you could drive around Europe, I think, and be fairly okay. Um, the trains were definitely nice because you could just like relax and, you know, have a bit of a sleep and everything. And it was fairly easy and, and all that sort of stuff. But um, places like, yeah, like Japan, like Tokyo, man, like y- imagine having to drive everywhere around Tokyo. I would probably just end up Ubering everywhere if that was still an Clarification. Option. Yes. Is Uber still an option? Yes, because you're not driving the car. Because you're not driving the car. You're paying. A, yeah, paying you're paying that. You're paying, paying that, that price. Premium price. Mm. And like yeah. even when we were in China, yeah. God, it was so easy to get on that train and then yeah. just zip around like subways and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And Hong Kong, oh, so easy. So easy. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's definitely a good dilemma because while I immediately do lean towards driving, there's a lot swaying it the other way towards having access to the public transport as well i guess it depends where you live because i'm thinking back to like you know being in central america and yeah like you had to take cars you know yeah the, the train system is not as good in central america yeah um so i guess it just depends where you live and i think where we live in australia public you know there's always that running joke and it, it has a foundation of truth to it definitely that the public transport system in australia is pretty crap and when you go overseas you definitely realize how crap the public transport system is here so where we live especially you're driving every single day yeah. just to get to the grocery store just to get to your friends houses um to go to the doctor you know you are mostly driving yeah so i feel like I'm leaning towards the driving option because it would it would mean that my daily life would change less and I would be inconvenienced or my holidays would be more expensive when I do take holidays. Yeah. But that's usually about once once a year. It yeah. also depends where you work because I work mm. in the city. Yeah. Mm. And if I had to drive into the city every single True. day, it would be the worst. My commute would be mm. double the time that it is at the moment. And I more just, annoying. And more annoying just by catching because I just sit and on the train. And parking is expensive yeah. in yeah, Sydney. Definitely. I mean, yeah. That is it's, true. It's a hard. I think, it, I think it comes down to contextual convenience depending on what you need in your life because, yeah, you, you would probably be better off taking the public transport option in all honesty because you use that more every day. And there's probably a lot of people who are in that same boat as well where giving up driving isn't going to be as big an issue as giving up public transport. But for mm. me and, and you as well, Jess, I think that, like, especially with a baby on the way, I could not Ooh, imagine leading, think about leading our life right now <laughs> without being able to drive and, like, have a pram in the back. Forgot or, like, about take the baby. The, take the baby around. I mean, like, we're, we're in a good spot. Like, we're a five-minute walk from our local train station, but because the public transport here is not the best, you're still, like, waiting a while between trains and you have to make changes and stuff, like, to get to our local well, you know, we, grocery to, store. Yeah. Right now, if we had to walk with a pram because we couldn't take you the couldn't car. You couldn't do it. It would, yeah. No. Like, the closest this one now is a 20 minute plus walk probably half an hour um oh yeah ha- uh, half an hour walk easy yeah. whereas it's a less than five minute drive yeah to get to the closest gro- grocery store i feel too like i mean it's just totally separate from from convenience factor but just i, I personally i get some joy out of driving as well like there's a there's just something about i don't know you know you're driving down a, a quiet road or through the the bush of australia like the national park drive or something like that and you, you just You've got yourself, you've got your music or maybe you've got your thoughts or something like that. And I think it can be a really sort of cathartic experience in a way sometimes as both well. Have, both have very obvious benefits and negatives in that 
Yeah, if you are a person that tends to enjoy driving, and not everyone enjoys driving, some people really just see it as a method of transportation to mm-hmm. get from A to that B. Is, that is me. And yeah, I think that's you, Demi. Whereas I think CJ, you and I quite enjoy driving. But if you have really bad traffic though, and you're in, you're, you know, you're in stop-start traffic, I don't necessarily enjoy that either, especially if I need to get somewhere. Um, so you've got yeah, you've got that relaxing aspect where you know the drive's really great. You know you can you know, get to the grocery store in five minutes. You don't have to catch a bus or two buses or change trains or, or, you know, walk to the train station and then catch the train. You don't have to worry about that because you can literally hop into your car that's just parked in your garage or just outside your house and get from A to B. But at the same time, if you take public transport, the benefit is that usually it's cheaper and usually you're just sitting down and you're relaxing, you're listening to a podcast like ours, a dilemma mechanic, (laughs) um, or listening to music. But you may also experience delays or what if the air conditioning system isn't working, which is bad in Australia, or what if you're sitting next to a really stinky guy or someone eating an egg sandwich or uh, someone clipping their toenails, or, I just, or, which or, has happened. I've seen it on I've, a train. I watched a woman get on the train at the domestic airport. She was a flight attendant and then she sat down and she opened a plastic like Tupperware container of boiled eggs mm. and then she proceeded to de-shell the eggs and then put the whole egg in her mouth. And I was wow. like, wow. <laughs> I couldn't take my eyes off it the entire time. Like, that is... So there's entertainment value in public <laughs> transport. That, that is Whether amazing. it's good or bad entertainment, though. Yeah. You could have those annoying, like, people. As usually it's, you know, young guys that come on and they're blasting their music yeah. from their phones, the thinking duff, duff they're, music. you know, all that. <laughs> there's definitely some, like, annoying aspects because I catch public transport, like, more than most of you guys. There's definitely some, like, really annoying aspects of public transport. Like, the lady, he was eating, like, a whole corn on the cob, on the train. I was like, how? That's pretty amazing. Why? You have to admit. Like, a whole, she, like, (laughs) sat down. She pulled out a little baggie. Whole cob of corn. Like, a full, not like a cobet. A full big cob of corn. Wow. And then she proceeded to eat it. And I could see her head going, like, doing the little corn cob motions. Going the from whole, side to from, side. <laughs> yeah. And, like, up and down like a pigeon. There is a guy angle grinding, like, during this podcast that was only a little bit. I apologize for anybody wearing headphones, but it was only a second. <laughs> Good old angle grinding on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. That is a classic Australian sound. It yeah. is. You lawnmower. Lawnmower, angle grinder. <laughs> They're pretty, like, classic noises in Australia. Yeah. I mean, anyway, if we're, if we're talking about classic Australia or classic Sydney with public transport, you've also got that experience of, yeah, oh, you get to the train station and then, oh, no, there's unexpected track works. You have to go on a different line than oh what you were planning. God. And then you have to change, you know, at a station that you weren't planning on changing. And then you have to wait for the bus that's going to take you to the station you were meant to go to on the original line. And then you have to wait for that bus. And then there's a big old line. And, you know, your journey ends up taking you like an hour and a half to two hours, especially sometimes And you don't even get a seat on the train. With your luggage yeah. as well. That was when we came back from Melbourne one time. We were meant to go to a birthday party because we were like, okay, you know, our flight leaves at about, you know, 2 p.m. from Melbourne. Well, we, you know, it's only an hour and a bit flight. So we're we'll back in Sydney at about three something and we'll definitely make it to this party that starts at seven o'clock. We'll definitely make it. You know, the train only takes, you know, less than an hour to get back from the airport. No. The trains didn't work, so you had to catch a bus to a train station where they did say that the trains were going to work. Get there. The train staff at the station are like, nope, they've told you the wrong information from the airport train station. You actually have to catch a bus all the way back. And we're like, we just got off the bus and now there's a massive line and we're carrying, you know, rolling suitcases and we have to wait. You know, one bus comes, the people go in there, the bus gets full, you have to wait for the next bus and they don't all just come in in a row. It was really annoying and we missed the party. So thank you, public transport. Whereas if we had someone pick us up or if we had driven to the airport or, you know, whatever, we would have been home in, you know, less than an hour. It's definitely gotten a lot better in Sydney than it has ever been. So our public transport system used to be called City Rail and then everybody would call it Shitty Rail because it was so terrible. And that's kind of when I was like going to uni in the city. 
And now it is a lot better. There's it is. less delays, less track work. They kind of plan it a bit better now that it's mm. um, like yeah. uh, transport for New South Wales. A little bit better. But not it, as, it, it n- nowhere near better. as bad as it mm. used to be. Yeah, I, you can polish a turd. <laughs> <laughs> Still a turd. <laughs> it's difficult in Sydney because everything was built such a long time ago. Like, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I Sydney like is badly ex- designed as well. Just an excuse. Sydney is an is poorly designed. Nobody knows where any services are underneath the ground. All the plumbing is, you know, I was looking because I work for an like, engineering company. We're looking at old like drawings that were drawn in the 1920s to try mm. to determine where this old pipeline That's ridiculous. is. Ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I don't think you can use the age of a city as an excuse because I think Sydney compared to some cities in the world where the public transport is really amazing. Take London, for example, the tube system. Great when we were there. No issues with that whatsoever. I mean, it would be interesting to hear like if we have any people listening from the UK, what they think of the tube, because they probably think it's shit. And we being from Sydney with our public transport system, think it's amazing. Wow. Even maybe like Sydney based because we we have pretty much trains you can access everywhere but other um states don't like yeah, bendigo only true. had like three train stations and wow. mostly buses queensland doesn't really have a very extensive train network yeah i'm not sure about um south australia or northern territory or western australia yeah That's i don't know true. i think even in new south wales they're probably like you know you go out to a certain distance from the cbd and access to trains is a lot harder much even harder. just take take near, near where we are like there are some places around us that you know even though it's technically metro sydney it still takes you 15 minutes to drive to the nearest oh, train station. yeah there are like, some suburbs that are yeah they're not near a train station you need a car yeah where my mum lives to the train station. like i have to drive i have yeah. to take a bus or drive to the train station and it's yeah. still yeah like 15 or 20 minutes yeah exactly from it, there it's better the closer you get into the city because you have more you know a lot of people in the city are using uh, public transport a lot more but it's definitely not to the same scale as being in in a city like like london or japan um mm. w- you know Ho- hong kong china where y- you don't even need to look at the train timetable because trains are always coming <laughs> so every frequent. two minutes and you have access to the underground everywhere whereas here in Sydney, you do need to look at the train timetable because if you miss that train, you're waiting 15 minutes, if not more, sometimes for the next train. Yeah. So it does, it can make you late and, and you need to schedule your time. So with my job, I had to wait for staff car parking because there's a massive line. There's hundreds, not thousands, actually, thousands of employees. So I had to take the uh, public transport for about a year and it was great. I, I you know, I luckily I live close to a station, luckily, CJ could drop me off so I wouldn't have to worry about parking at the station as well sometimes Mm. I'd walk would take 15 minutes to walk that's okay sometimes it's a nice walk if it's a nice day if it's raining that would actually be very annoying as well or very hot you know 40 degree day um that would be annoying but it was mostly fine But it did actually introduce a little bit of stress for me because when I woke up, I had to ensure that I had to be at the station by a certain time so that I wouldn't miss my train and leaving work as well. Sometimes I just think, oh, I just want to finish off this email and then I'll go to the train station or, you know, a call might happen or someone might ask me a question and I'd basically have to tell them, I'm really sorry, but you sort of, you have to ask me tomorrow because I have to run for the train. Whereas now that I'm, you know, just driving, Someone asked me a question. I have to finish off this email because I I want to, to, you know, wrap it up for the day or whatever. I can do it. And then I can, you know, leave work at a really odd time, like, you know, 4.47 p.m. Knowing, ah, that's okay. I'm not, you know, trying to align with any timeline. If you had to drive everywhere, though, you couldn't use public transport. You'd be a lot less fun at parties. (laughs) <laughs> yeah definitely. because you'd be constantly thinking oh, i've true. got to drive home so you know you can't have too much to drink can't enjoy yourself too much unless you just stayed over everybody's house you would stay yeah over. i suppose but like you couldn't catch the night rider home from the city you'd have to no. you'd have to drive why would you want to catch the night rider home from the city though that's the question we have literally waited until the first train because we haven't collectively yes. wanted to catch the night rider we it's went so into terrible. hyde park the home of the massive rats <laughs> cat rats cat, the rats. cat rats and we waited there for a few hours drunk also many of us were drunk some of us weren't as drunk as others and remember the night clearly i certainly do not and we went 
waited for the first train out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you Jessica do it, like... abused staff at Hungry Jacks because they wouldn't let her stay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let's cut that out. I don't want any uh, legal <laughs> action against me. And, uh, I didn't do anything. She didn't guys, do anything. You guys were doing like cartwheels and handstands. Handstands, and shit yeah. In the park and I wasn't. Just, like, no, I know because you, were. you and I were the ones who hadn't had too much to drink at that point. Yes. We're just like watching these guys like doing crazy shit in the park with these cat rats running about. Less fun for us. But, <laughs> but that's the other negative as well. In Sydney, where we live, the trains aren't 24-7. Yeah, which is so, really annoying. Which is really bad. I think the last train is at about 1 a.m. That's way too early if you're going out into the city. Yeah. You know, what if you're at a bar and you're just like chilling out and then it becomes 12.30 and you think, oh, my God, we have to run to the train station now to try and catch that last train. Mm. Um, they yeah. should they shouldn't stop the trains like stop the trains at three a.m. maybe or four a.m. but don't stop the trains at no. one a.m. You stop them at four. You may as well just like have may them well just run, keep, going. keep running anyway. Like because I think the first train back up is like four thirty or something like morning. that anyway. But. Yeah, we should have twenty four hour public transport in Australia, or spe- maybe just especially in Sydney because of our alcohol problem, <laughs> and we always get into fights. And I think one of the leading parts of the fight is because there's no easy access out of the city so if you're drunk and angry you go yeah. to the park and you start doing weird <laughs> shit <laughs> you start like air punching the air and like, no <laughs> do you want to catch the net right <laughs> you just have no way to get out like you can't just yeah. put somebody on a train you no. can't just put somebody on a bus and get them home because there isn't any public transport and i would say catching the night rider is even more dangerous because you have a lot more drunk people on mm. there crammed so into a tight space crammed into this bus that takes forever to get back <laughs> home from the city all stops guys <laughs> all stops and the buses you know if you're feeling a bit sick because you've had a bit too much to drink it's mm. vomit city and that's why we don't go in that rider because yeah. when one person vomits <laughs> everyone starts vomiting <laughs> My partner has vomited on many a night rider bus. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. it's yeah. always a really traumatic experience for me. Not for him because he doesn't remember it, but for the person he vomits on, the bus driver. Yeah. Well, Demi's boyfriend, we like to say this, you know, bring up this story all the time. But one time Sage, uh, Demi was driving Dylan back home or somewhere, I think back home. And Dylan had, oh wait, should I mention his name? You can now. Okay. <laughs> Demi's no. boyfriend is called Dylan, by the way. Um, and he vomited into a plastic bag. <laughs> and then whipped it out the window. Whipped out the window. But he didn't and... get it quite accurately out the window? <laughs> oh, no, he got that out of the window, but oh. then I had to give him another bag on which he vomited on the seat. Oh. Okay. Even though he had the bag. <laughs> oh, my God. And then he proceeded to take 45 minutes to get out of the car. Oh, there's a cat. <laughs> She's back. Making she has something appearance. to say about yeah. buses. <laughs> I guess another thing is if you, if you gave up driving, you couldn't drive anymore. You couldn't pull fully sick manies down, you know, the sleepy do Moon Street. Yeah, because that's what everybody does. <laughs> In your RISA, which yeah. I still maintain is not a valid term. It is. It's definitely a no, valid it is. term. No, it is. Like it is a, a term. Like a up Japanese, RISA. you know, JDM style car. Uh, yeah. yeah, totally. It definitely is. Yeah. That, being, that all being said, I'm still going to probably pick the public transport side yeah. because even I'm in Sydney <laughs> even in Sydney because I work in You're the city brave woman, Demi. and I don't want to like I don't like really like driving yeah but I do it out of necessity because I did live quite far away from a, the public transport system so I had to get there quickly to mm. catch a train or whatever to uni yeah um and I will give you lifts <laughs> I work in the city see people will give me lifts I work in the city yeah. I don't want to drive into the city every day. Like I've done yeah. my my years of driving really long distances to get to work and I'm sick of it. Like I yeah. like just sitting on the train and if I'm really tired, I can just have a nap. Yeah. You can't have a nap if you drive. That's yeah. true. You will crash That's the true. car. Yeah, there, I think there's definitely pros and cons to both. I'm going with driving over public transport for sure because yeah I'm i going. couldn't do my job without driving unfortunately so yeah yours yeah. You, you need to drive so. even short of that i probably would still pick driving even if i could even, yeah actually i don't know but i'm gonna pick driving in my context my life right now i'm picking driving over public transport yeah. same for me i have to pick driving all right there not a unanimous go. one guys shame not, a unanimous. Shame, shame, not shame. another cheer that's all right that's okay we're allowed to have differing opinions so <laughs> On to my question, the last question for the podcast, yeah. and we are going even further down <laughs> in the seriousness stakes. Yeah, we're d- diving into the realms of the fantastical and absurd with this <laughs> final question, I think. So. so my question is, my dilemma is, would you rather be a chicken 
<laughs> or a cow. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want to know what made you think of this question. What was the circumstances behind this question? The circumstances were... You were eating a chicken and a cow? No, I was not. <laughs> but CJ asked... He always asks me, you know, think of a question because I'm usually the last one that um, thinks of a question. Usually I think about it about five minutes before the podcast. So I really tried to think of a wacky one. I had a look at some ideas online and thought, nope, I like this one. Would you rather be a chicken or a cow? Because... If you really think about it, there are a lot of factors to consider here, <laughs> <laughs> which factors. I'm sure we'll discuss. There is, there is a lot of factors. Oh my god, yeah, there's many factors. Uh, my my first immediate like thought, brain thought goes to being a cow over being a chicken. Why, CJ? Because chickens have to pop out eggs all the time, <laughs> and I feel like that would be uncomfortable. What? Yeah. I feel like it would be checking like a real. But they're made the to. They're made. I think it's relieving for them. I mean, do you not feel relieved when you do your 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 daily? Poop? I mean, sometimes, but if it's like a big one, it's like <laughs> painful as well. I suppose. Um, breathe. The, okay. the, the The secret is breathing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like you, you could also the way you think. Are we comparing like a chicken's like laying an egg to like a, it's like a chicken gasm? Like they they like. <laughs> Ew. Because <laughs> it's so hard to be a chicken. I so. Wow. Am I a chicken and a cow on a commercial farm? Or am I like on a local? Like, is there a chance that I could die and be used for meat? Yeah. Are you like a farmer's pet or like, you're like a farm, farm animal? Or I are mean, you like a, like, yeah, you're going to be. I don't in a think barn. if I were to be very, very realistic, I don't think many Australian farmers keep chickens and cows for fun i think you know how dare destiny. you say that <laughs> you know your destiny okay so would we just consider that we're like we're like either a grass-fed cow so we still have a relatively you would hope you're a grass-fed cow so it's random our potential situation you could be grain-fed you could be cage-free chicken yeah yeah i know you, you could, could be... be all those things but in regards to this question is it just a random that we end up as one yeah you don't know okay. what your fate I'm, is we don't know what our fate is we i don't, don't, don't know we don't know what our, fate what our fates are as humans don't know what your fate is. Yeah, but I'm not, gonna, we're not gonna, I'm not going to trap you in a cage. This is a constructed question. So <laughs> you just, would hope if, as long as you don't commit a crime, well, you stay out of the well, cage. Well, no, there's any human. parameters because, you know, the vast majority of chickens live probably awful lives, the same as the vast majority of cows. But I feel like maybe the ratio of chickens living really, really like shitty lives compared to cows is maybe a bit higher. Yeah. But there, risk, are risk more, factor -wise. there are more chickens than cows, though, so you have to, you know... Yeah, but it's about percentages, you, though. Yeah, it's numbers. about percentages. So I think the percentage of chickens that are living really shit lives comparative to the whole, you know, community rather than the, the percentage of cows that are living shitty lives, I feel like is worse. Yeah, I don't, it's a in, <laughs> interesting choice of animals because they both have other like secondary products. So chickens have eggs and cows have milk. Mm. So like, are you just going to be a an egg laying chicken in a hobby farm so you're you're not really at risk of being killed are you just going to be like a cow that lives on a hobby farm and you have like a baby and then you have milk and the farmer gets milk and you have a baby still or am i like commercially farmed hen that just sits in a little cage and pops out, pops the, out eggs. the eggs constantly because that's that's an egg farm or mm. am i a dairy cow that is forced to get pregnant and then my baby is taken away from me so that they could have milk and it's different because I'm a vegetarian, so I don't eat meat, but I do eat eggs and drink milk. I try not to, but it's really hard because I like oh, cheese. Oh, when you love cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I do love cheese. And also um, something to consider is, um, especially for CJ, if you turn into a cow or a chicken, are you going to be a female cow or chicken? Well, I assume so because... I've you could be a male. You could be a rooster or a bull. And think about what you have to be used. Do you have uh, stipulations? I feel, like, I feel like the life of, I mean, unfortunately, I feel like the life of a rooster or a bull is, would be wildly better than that of a cow or a chicken. Because you don't have roosters crammed together to make eggs. You I mean, don't maybe have, if you are a bull, it might be fantastically not, better. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're not like bulls don't get slaughtered for their meat. So, and but they don't, don't they? Not, uh, not as not frequently as, as what a cow would be. And I've also, you know, bulls don't get, they're not, you don't have dairy bulls. So I feel like if you're considering. But you could potentially be like an Angus um, bull and you would be farmed for your meat. I thought Angus was still a cow. 
Angus is a type of cow. Yeah, yeah. Angus is a type of a type of breed, a breed of. Yeah, but you would have they to have an Angus bull. bull as yeah, well, yeah. right? Yeah, but they use the bulls for breeding the cows. But they, they could also the be killed for meat. What if they have too many males? You can't have too many bulls in the one, in the one. What's a, what's a what's a group of a cows? A herd of cows. Yeah, I know. You have but to have I'm like the stallion. The, yeah, okay, <laughs> I get what you're saying. But the ratio <laughs> would be wildly better than a cow or a chicken. So I feel like let's just contain I'm this pretty to cow sure. or chicken because I would definitely pick bull or rooster over cow Fine, or chicken. Fine then. Okay, so we're all female farm animals. Okay, but given the fact that when little chickens hatch at like a chicken farm, that all the male ones are killed. Because only females ones live, would you still pick a rooster? Would you uh, I mean, still, be, still pick a rooster over a chicken. Well, you were born yeah. as a chick. Yes. You were, you were a chick and you were a boy chick and yeah. you are a girl chick. At least you but put out of your misery quickly in that instance. If you were a chicken, wouldn't you also feel like you had a great sense of purpose as a hen that you were popping out? How many eggs? chickens know, sit there I mean, and I feel think, purpose? I, I think yes, but not if you're in that situation of the chickens that are caged, like, and you know, there's 20 chickens to like one square meter. Like, I feel like that would what be awful. What if that's all, this is getting, actually, this is getting uh, surprisingly philosophical. <laughs> it is. But what if you as a chicken only knew about life in a cage? As a chicken. And you didn't know about the freedom? I still think that would be awful because I think there'd be a lot of disease. There'd be a lot of injury. And regardless of what you're, you grow up getting used to, I still think a bad situation is bad. You take any, any animal and yeah, I mean, depending on what you grow up with, you do get used to it to a degree, but it doesn't mean that it's more comfortable or pleasant just because you're used to it. But if you don't know the alternative, then that is your comfort. Not uh, really. No, I, don't, like, I don't think so. Chickens that are bred for their meat are never able to walk really because they're so pumped full of hormones that their like breasts are too heavy for them to actually sit up and you'd still be in pain because of that That's like it's true. not going to be comfortable That's at true. all yeah i think pain is pain like regardless and if you're in a bad situation like that you're probably just going to have more general physical discomfort and pain mm. than if you're in a good situation even though you may think that's the norm i still think you're going to feel those things you don't feel them less the likelihood of uh, if you were a chicken, whether you, you know, your, your options are cage free or in a cage, um, or as a cow, I guess it would be grass fed or grain fed. And then you could potentially for both of them be for meat or for milk or eggs. Yeah. Or you could be in a barn and never see the sunlight or you can see the sun. Yeah. Feel grass on your feet. I, things are becoming a lot more ethical in I don't know about the rest of the world, but in Australia, definitely becoming more people are wanting those more ethical options if they still want to continue to eat meat. So a lot less yeah. chickens are kept in barns now and you definitely know which ones are and which ones aren't. And a lot of, there's a lot of like little stickers on the beef packets that say like grass fed, grain fed, so you know exactly what you're getting. Mm. And people are making those more ethical choices. But do I want to be a cow or a chicken? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think this has gone in a much more ethical discussion way, ethically discussed way than I thought it potentially would. Um, I think the way that I'm going to think about this question and is that the worst case scenario for both a cow and a chicken is really, really bad. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to look at it, the best case scenario of both animals and make my decision based on that. So I suppose best case situation for, you know, a cow is it, you know, it's a really open field style farm. You get a lot of time out, you know, eating the grass, moving around and you have your baby, you have your baby and you get to keep your baby. And maybe, you know, you're on a farm that they use you for a little bit of milk, you know, and that's sort of it. You've got old Joe Farmer and he keeps you around and that's a nice little life. And for a chicken, you know, you're, you're in your big sort of free range area and you get to roam about and pop out eggs and yeah, both many babies animals get to live a full life. And then what I start to think about is like anatomically, what kind of animal would I rather become? You know, because like, yeah, chicken. It's not like you could fly two feet if you were a chicken or four legs. Because <laughs> chickens can't really fly all that well. Yeah, they can't. They can fly to like the top of a fence. That's about as high as they can go, if that. Yeah. So it's wings. Not like, yeah. Or hooves. <laughs> These are the questions you must ask yourself. Yeah, wings that don't work, though. We, I mean, we know Jess is a fan of wings. <laughs> She's so. definitely a fan of wings. <laughs> Even if they don't particularly work very well. So. Beak or four stomachs? Mm. A ruminant. Mm. Do mm. I want to ruminate? Mm. Stomachs, yes. Mm. Constant chewing or popping out an egg every morning? I mean, I guess from like an animal perspective, a cow I would see more of the world. <laughs> what? It- I think so. Explain. 
Well, I mean, I feel like they're able to cover more ground than a chicken, like on a farm. <laughs> cover more ground. Yeah, you know, you drive past a farm and the cows are always, you know, like they're under the shade when it's hot and they're like roaming about and, I, you know, they, they see more of the of the farm and of, of the world, I suppose. Do know? chickens have a herd personality? Yeah. Like if there's like a lot of female chickens, they'll all stay together. Like, and they'll all roost together. It's very cute. I've had chickens before and they used to, we didn't have, well, without my dad's house, he didn't have like a little hutch for them to be in. So they just roost on the fence. Like a little tiny yeah. fence that was next to the patio, and then cuddle up next to each other all night. Very cute. Do chickens get annoyed by flies in the same way that a cow would? No, because oh. the so flies can't really get into their like on their skin. It just touches the feathers. Mm. Oh, that's, that's a, a that's, big one. That's, that's a, a big, big one actually. <laughs> Where cows have to do this swishy tail. Yeah. Yeah. Cows also have big eyelashes as well. I think to keep yes. the flies away from yeah. their eyes. So. Yeah. Chickens have eyelashes too. Oh, yeah. I mean, but no, they're not big and beautiful like cows. Mm, yeah. I That's once cool. saw the cutest baby cow at the Easter show and it had a little green bow on its hair mm-hmm. and it was in the mummy and baby cow. So That's cute. Thing. It was so adorable. If I could have just like <laughs> taken it. Yeah. I mean, adorable factor is definitely something. <laughs> you have to consider. But a little cows chicken are... is very cute. Yeah. I mean, little I, chicks are. Yeah. Another thing as well chickens can walk both up and down a set of stairs. Cows, you can't. <laughs> Why You're screwed if you walk upstairs as a cow. Can't get back down. <laughs> You're fucked, cow. You're fucked. <laughs> so that luxury is not afforded to cows. <laughs> <laughs> luxury. Yeah. A nice observation, CJ. Don't take it uh, that for granted, guys. <laughs> Although I don't know how many <sighs> stairs you'd walk up and down on a farm. It's a very interesting question because cows can like, it's not like, you know, when you think of a cow, you think of like a black and white cow, but they also come in like brown and white or just brown or just black or just white. I don't know, Demi. I don't see color. <laughs> <laughs> and chickens, you could be like a really fancy chicken. Yeah, you could be. Like a little bantam. It's like a little cotton yeah, ball with like frilly feet or. The plumage. Yeah. Oh, you could use many different like versions. Mm, yeah. I still think I'm leaning more towards a cow. Just, I feel like. I don't know. I feel like we'd just be in that, you know, better life. Like you, you get about a little bit more. I, know I keep coming back to that, you know, movement. <laughs> you so get about. Like, but I don't know. I feel like as a chicken, you might get bored of your little area after a while, whereas a cow can, you've got more, you know, room to roam, I suppose. You and might like, be very stressed as a hen, as a mother hen, with your 10 chicks following you all the time. And they keep going, you know, with their little chirps. That's so That'll be a stressful time. Though. So cute. Uh, cows can have best friends. So you Aww. can have a best friend if you have a cow. That's nice. They nice that's to know. so cute. Yes. But chickens have like you have many best friends because you're in a whole flock of chickens. Yeah. So do you want to be a sociable animal or do you want to be well, I mean, one of are, many? Cows aren't they still sociable. You still see cows in groups. Well, I suppose. Okay. How about introvert or extrovert sort of style? <laughs> and which one is which? I feel like chickens are more extroverts because mm. you have to stand out of the crowd. Whereas cows can just have their best friend and go over to that, you know, little patch of of the uh, of the of the paddock and and eat your grass. <laughs> <laughs> See, I think I'm leaning towards chicken because mm. they're kind of like little dinosaurs. Mm. And I'd always I like dinosaurs. I want to be a little dinosaur. Like, have you ever watched like a chicken like tear like a bug to pieces? It's very fun looking. Oh god! They like hunt it. I've seen them like hunt lizards mm. and hunt like cockroaches and stuff and they like iron them off and walk in really slowly and then they pounce and like tear it apart it's quite fun looking <laughs> maybe it would be a bit of fun a like cow like yeah like a chicken can eat both meat and like grain and grass mm-hmm. so you're more of you're like an omnivore mm-hmm. where a cow can only be yeah like a vegetarian mm. Mm. Would What's you a- have the mind of the animal or would you have your current mind No you would have the mind of the animal Okay because that would have probably been really weird I think. yes I yeah, that's a mind and thoughts and stuff that you're in <laughs> a cow, animal's an, body. An, a cow or a chicken i don't know what i would rather if that were the case so I let's think not go there <laughs> i'm gonna be a chicken go and be a chicken i'm gonna be a chicken yeah i feel like you know small and you just run around really fast sometimes you like jump really high onto a fence with the aid of your wings you can be fun colored i want to be a bantam Specifically, because they mm. look fun, like yeah. little cotton balls, okay. tearing up lizards, scratching around, <laughs> dust bathing. I feel like you've thought about this before. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> I feel like we're just like laying you know, egg. enabling a dream that you've had. Well, like my for a auntie, long time. my auntie and uncle have chickens, so they've been around chickens a lot more. Yeah, you're really cute as a baby. Mm. And then Very you're like cute. pretty as an adult. Cow babies are cute as well. Yeah, yeah, you're really cute. But you, like, would you call a cow pretty? Like an actual fully grown cow? Because chickens mm. are pretty. Mm. 
Yeah, you have a pretty chicken. You probably wouldn't, go, you you probably wouldn't know chicken. what that is if you were the animal. But. Yeah, but other people don't. <laughs> like, people. Look at, they look upon you. Yeah, okay. Well. <laughs> I still think I'm leaning towards cow because of the roaming aspect. Do cows usually have access to a barn? Or mm. can they just be out in the paddock for yeah, it could ages? Be like, and how long are they allowed to be out in a paddock? I have no idea. I don't know. No, I don't don't know. Don't know much about agriculture. So to be honest. I suppose if you're a chicken and it rains, you would go into your little hutch and you'd have, you know, your little house that you have access to all the time. Mm-hmm. Whereas maybe a cow would be let out into this paddock for, I don't know. Like I think traditionally, if I think back to the cartoons that I watched as a little <laughs> the cartoons, child, take it as gospel, <laughs> the cows were let out of the barn in the start of the day and then they went back to the barn at night. Mm. They, I but think I documentary. Think, <laughs> <laughs> Cartoon documentary. I'm pretty sure they might just have access, but they might have roamed really fast, so they're not going to always go back yeah. to there. All right. What like cows you? don't go home to roost. Uh, I don't think they have that. <laughs> Can you imagine seeing a cow roosting? <laughs> just <laughs> up on the weirdest sight. Four little hooves on yeah. like a really <laughs> yeah. small piece of wood. Here's another thing. In favor of cow. I'm a cow advocate now. I've decided <laughs> strongly changed. for cow, and I will advocate for cow. Okay. You would be a god to some cultures. Oh, as true. A cow. You would live a great life if you're a cow in India. Yeah, you really would. That's true. Whereas chicken, I don't think chickens are, uh, are considered a, a godly creature in any culture or well, religion. My dad, um, it's a story. And actually, I think both my parents have very similar stories. They both grew up in countries where, you know, and in the rural part of, of these countries where, you know, it was pretty common for your next door neighbor to have chickens on their property. And every now and again, they would, yes, kill the chicken and eat it for dinner. Like they would they would have on their farm what they, you mm. know, ate and used, that, that sort of, you know, culture. Specifically, my dad likes to tell this story where, Next door, they did have chickens. My my dad's family didn't have chickens. And one day, he um, felt like chicken for dinner. So he, uh, you know, um, went into his neighbor's property, managed to catch a chicken, and then cooked it. <laughs> and the neighbor was looking for that chicken because apparently it was his neighbor's most favorite chicken. Oh, God. No. <laughs> my best friend. <laughs> so he went and like knocked, you know, to my dad's family's house. I was like, have you seen, is a chicken in your backyard or anything like that? Chicken's just like roasting in the oven. It was like, your dad, nice. He just <laughs> slyly looks at the, the, the oven and he's like, uh, no. No. We have not seen the chicken. We have not seen your There's chicken. prized chicken feathers yeah. all over like the floor. Yeah, that's right. Like some like on the clothes still. <laughs> like, just wiping them off. Yeah. So, Although, you know, you may be living a great life in someone's backyard with, you know, fantastic owners. As a chicken, you are easier to steal. That's true. It's very and true. you're also easier to be nabbed by foxes, oh, which are a problem. Like, well, predators. not a problem, I suppose, but they are, they're, they're, they're around here. I remember when we first built our house, there were foxes literally coming up to the back door before we had a fence. They stole our KFC. Because yeah, <laughs> <stealing stuff. laughs> we had like a giant like mountain of garbage just on where our, in our alfresco area. Recycling. We, yeah, yeah, because we just wanted to get rid of it slowly bit by bit. And uh, yeah, then we I came out one night just to get a glass of water and there was like a freaking massive fox, like bigger than a medium sized dog, just like rummaging around out there. It looked at me, I looked at it and then it bolted. But you got to contend with foxes if you're a chicken. You don't have to worry about you any predators, predators, really, in yeah. Australia if you're a cow. Aliens. Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I guess that's a... If you're worrying about aliens as a cow, you're worrying about aliens as a human. <laughs> so I feel like the, the risk is not enhanced. You're not I'm, really worrying about being taken by a fox in the middle of the night as a human. So. But chickens are harder. Like you would say, they're harder to catch because they can run faster than a cow. And that's why chickens are in like flocks of chickens. Mm. But cows are heavy. You can't safety, pick up a cow. Safety. In- you can't tip a cow. You can tip a cow. That's, well, what, cow tipping. that's what cow tipping is. It's like the one animal you can tip. You fall. Okay. <laughs> as a cow, you fall down and then like fall over to the side. You can't get back up again. You're fucking dead because your stomach's and. Why out. do people tip cows then? For fun. <gasps> but you're killing them. Yes, pretty much. Because then all of your like acids from one stomach oh, no. float into your another stomach. And that's then you so can't come back from that. Like you, that's, you spells death for a cow. So you have to get shot in the head. Why are these Why are these kids in America tipping cows? The look on Jess's face right now. It's priceless. I think I don't know what because we don't really have cow tipping in Australia. So if anyone from the US can like write in and explain this to us. But maybe they like write them again. This is actually really emotional. 
Don't tip cows. Maybe they pick them back up or something. <laughs> <laughs> Jess is going to cry. I am. There's crazy hormones. Don't tip cows. That's really mean. I was going to choose cow. <laughs> now I'm afraid of cow But tipping. if you like, as a cow, if you fall down, like, and you can't get back up again, you're dead. Like, you Damn. can't come back. As a chicken, yeah. how often do you see a chicken fall down? All the time. <laughs> Not very often. Never seen a chicken fall really? down. Really? It's true. They're Don't pretty they well balanced. Well. I mean, yeah. I feel like as a cow, you probably wouldn't fall over much unless someone was physically trying to make you but fall over. But what if you just tripped over a rock or something? Mm. Seeing you, things that you're roaming around your paddock so often. What if you just like were clumsy and you fell off, fell over? I mean, I feel like, yeah, that would be a pretty bad way to go. I reckon it would be pretty painful too because like you're not, the acids aren't supposed to be in that stomach. That's why they have so many stomachs because they, they go through the process. Yeah. They have the breaking down mm. process of grass mm. and stuff. Through that. Oh, I don't know now. I was going to pick cow. Still go. I'm still going. I'm still. I'm still in the cow camp. I think I still go for a cow. I'm in the chicken camp now. Oh. <laughs> Jess is a chicken. I'm a chicken. I think I have a much safer, nicer life. Bring mm. on those foxes! I can outrun you. Don't worry. I don't think you can outrun. A fox. I'm pretty sure I can outrun. Like a fox. if you're in a group, you have less chance of dying because somebody else has. Like yeah. I guess exactly. you would all have equal chance, but you your chances are equally small. It's just one of you is going to die this time. You just have to be faster than the slowest chicken. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, like, you are the slowest chicken. Yeah, not have any injuries, not have any babies. Yeah, I'm yeah. a chicken. That's chicken. it. Done. <laughs> it's sorted. All right. Well, I guess we've got two for chicken, one for cow. Let us know which one you would have gone for, because I feel like there's this uh, majority of people out there, I think, are in the cow camp, I reckon. They'd be so on my certain. side. Too. Yeah, I'm definitely certain. Do about. write in, let us know any of your answers to any of these questions. Yeah. That um, was actually strangely difficult. <laughs> Chickens. Yeah, that went down a whole way that I wasn't sort yeah, of expecting that question to go down. It wasn't just like, oh, silly chicken question. I thought we'd be talking like, oh, you know, oh, you could, you, could, you don't really use your wings as a chicken. Oh, yeah, but with the hooves as a cow would be pretty, you know, inconvenient <laughs> as well. I was like, no, we're like talking about like the ethical issues of like, you know, grain and grass and, you know, caged eggs and all that sort of and stuff. That's and that's what's so great about talking about these really random questions though because you never know what you may have to consider when you're forced yeah. to give an answer cow for sure cow for the win and you could team like cow. have a nice hashtag soft- team cow <laughs> <laughs> yeah i want hashtag team cow okay, hashtag team chicken team chicken <laughs> kitty says goodbye guys yep yeah. daisy says goodbye all right well that's it i suppose right. interesting discussions all around yes very interesting Bye, guys. Bye. See you next week. Well, that's it for this episode, everyone. Go and check us out on Instagram at the Dilemma Academy and leave your suggestions for dilemmas you'd like us to discuss. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, or you can email us at thedilemmaacademy at gmail.com. Also, if you like the episode, why not follow us and leave a review wherever it is you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, school's out at the Dilemma Academy.